Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Michelle Maldonado, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Scranton. And it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you today to the announcement of a center that will not only serve our students, but will serve the people of our region and beyond through its influence and in public service. Now, I would like to introduce the Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Scranton, Dr. Jeff Gingrich. Thank you, Dean Maldonado, uh, and welcome everybody. This is a special day for us. Let me add my own welcome uh, to you for joining us here today and also send warm regards from our president, Father Joseph Marino of the Society of Jesus, who due to traveling uh, could not make it here, but he wish sends all his greetings and wishes he could be with us today. This is really a great day for the university and really for all our region. I'm pleased to officially announce the opening of the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service at the University of Scranton. So. Big day of celebration. This center expands on a key role that the university as a Catholic and Jesuit university plays within our community. And we're really also so pleased to have it in this room today. This beautiful paintings that adorn the, the clerestory of the Scranton Heritage Room explore the themes of the arts and religion, science from both a world perspective and from a regional one. These perspectives capture a point of intersection that is so important to the university. We're a place where the world of knowledge is discovered and shared, and we do so while remaining deeply engaged with our region and our community partners. Throughout our history, the university has partnered with the community to address the critical challenges of the day. We hope that this center will be a source for regional public servants in 13 counties in northeastern Pennsylvania to understand how to build and keep the public trust while always seeking to accomplish their difficult but essential work in new and better ways. I want to thank our dedicated faculty members and especially Dr. Jean Harris, Dr. Joanna Hopper. You'll hear more from them today for their tremendous efforts in getting this center established. You'll hear more from them about the center and the opportunities it will provide for our students I also want to especially thank Senator Casey for being with us today and for all you do for us as a, as a great partner and for being such a great advocate for the work of the center. Thank you all for joining us today for the official opening of the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service at the University of Scranton. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I am proud that the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service will be housed in the university's College of Arts and Sciences. I am grateful to the dedication and work of our faculty members who have made this concept a reality for our region and for our university. I especially want to thank the Center's co-directors, Dr. Jean Harris, Professor of Political Science, who has served the university for more than 30 years and is well known in the community for her work with the Ready to Run program and the League of Women Voters, and Dr. Joanna Hopper, PhD, Assistant Professor of Political Science, who joined the university faculty in 2020 and will now serve as the center's co-director. Not bad for your second year, <laughs> gotta say. I would like to introduce Dr. Hopper to provide an overview of the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service. Dr. Hopper. Thank you, Dean Maldonado. Good morning and thank you all for joining us for the official launch of the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service. My co-director, Dr. Jean Harris, and I are honored to be here today with Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Jeff Gingrich, uh, the Dean of College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Michelle Maldonado, the Center's exceptional intern and university student, Clara Downey, and the Honorable U.S. Senator, Bob Casey. We would also like to thank the Center's steering committee members, Julie Shoemaker-Cohen, Donna Witek, Dr. Matthew Meyer, Dr. Mike Jenkins, Dr. Mike Allison, as well as Dean Maldonado. 
We are grateful for the hard work and support that have made this day possible. And it is an important day. In about two and a half weeks, local voters will head to the polls. They head to the polls at a time when, according to Pew Research Center, public trust in government has been near to historic lows for more than a decade. They head to the polls during a pandemic and as the outcomes of a highly contentious election continue to be questioned. In our political science courses, we speak often of the fragility of democracy. Democracy depends on our faith in our political institutions and in our investment in those institutions. The Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service will focus on encouraging and nurturing trust and investment in our democracy by promoting the development of ethical and competent public officials and of civic, civically knowledgeable, responsible, and engaged community members in northeastern Pennsylvania. In the 13 counties the center will serve, we plan to reach out to local community members, providing them with the tools and resources they need to hold their elected officials accountable. We plan to engage with public officials or those who hope to run for office to help educate and provide support through workshops, certificate programs, and opportunities for networking. And finally, we plan to invest in our students, providing internships, opportunities for research, mentorship, and training that will allow them to become competent and ethical leaders in our local communities. Thus far, we have already created student internship opportunities, provided a workshop for local government officials on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and are preparing to host Ready to Run, a full-day event aimed at helping local women run for office. While the center officially launches today, efforts to support ethical and effective government have already begun at the University of Scranton. Our goals for the future are admittedly ambitious. But the need for ethical leadership and for a government that works for the people is critical, especially here at home, in the communities that we cherish. Today we began a journey to create partnerships, programming, and networks that support Northeastern Pennsylvania and our campus community. We thank you for your support today and in the years to come, and we look forward to the opportunity to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hopper. And I wish to thank you and Dr. Harris and the members of the steering committee for your service. We will now hear from Clara Downey. She's a junior at the in the College of Arts and Sciences from East Hampton, Massachusetts. She's majoring in political science with a minor in history and a concentration in legal studies and peace and justice studies. Such a classic Scranton student. <laughs> she is also a student government senator, so we have the senators sitting next to each other, and is an intern for the fall semester for the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service. Clara. Good morning, everyone. First, I just want to say I am so excited to see everyone here in person today. I'm sure you're all looking forward to getting back to some type of normalcy, whatever that may look like. Um, I guess for now, you all have very nice eyes. Um, I am the student intern in the center this semester, as Dean Maldonado mentioned, um, and I could not be more grateful to be involved in the beginnings of such a powerful campus asset. Um, the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service is a remarkable resource um, for students who might be interested in public service or at the very least in learning more about local government. Um, I've been able to see firsthand what Dr. Hopper and Dr. Harris are working to offer students at the university and similarly how important it is for students and most especially Jesuit educated students to be active and knowledgeable voters. Uh, the work we are starting here in the center will enable my peers and I to not only be better people but to enact real change in our world because locality is where that has to start. Unfortunately, I think we as a society have um, unconsciously created this uncomfortability around the political process. Um, over the past few months, I have really enjoyed um, trying to break that stress a little bit for students on campus. For example, um, for Constitution Day, I went around campus and asked students at random why they vote or why they think that voting is important. Um, during the 2020 election, different groups of students on campus really worked to make the voting process essential to student life. 
Um, and this center is going to provide us with the ability to continue that work year-round in and out of election seasons, which is really, really important to us here. Um, so again, I just want to thank you all so much for coming and for being a part of this and for supporting us here. Um, and I also just want uh, you to rest assured that moments like this prove that our student body has the tools to ignite real, valuable, and educated change in our world. So thank you very much. That's going to be a tough act to follow. <laughs> just saying. Thank you. I'm delighted to hear of your engagement um, with our students outside of the classroom. Keep up the good work. And speaking of work, the university has worked with representatives in the government and public service sectors of our region in a number of ways, through projects and initiatives led by our faculty and staff involving students in political science and other departments, such as sociology, criminal justice and criminology, as well as with the Office of Community and Government Relations. Our students have volunteered for representatives running for office and have worked as interns in offices of elected officials. We are also pleased to have here with us today staff members representing the offices of Representative Matt Cartwright and Governor Tom Wolf. I would also like to recognize our neighbor and our United States Senator and a good friend of the university, Senator Bob Casey, who we will hear from now. Senator Casey. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Dean, thank you very much. First of all, let me apologize for being late. The program started because I was running. The program started late because of my, my uh, schedule, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope no one misses classes today because of me. <laughs> <laughs> but Dean, thank you so much for uh, your leadership and for this um, occasion. Uh, it is a happy day to be able to talk about the beginning of this new center. And um, it's especially significant for me as a, as a native and resident of, of this city, uh, this county, and this region. But I want to thank Dean Maldonado for her leadership. I uh, also want to thank Dr. Gingrich. Uh, Dr. Hopper, Dr. Harris, whom I didn't see coming in, but Dr., great to see you, and you didn't have a chance to say hello before I sat down. Um, I've often thought that um, with all the years I've had now in public office, I should take one of your courses <laughs> and figure out what I did wrong. <laughs> so maybe, uh, can you audit them? That, I like that pass-fail option would help me a lot. Um, but I think too many of us in public office probably seriously did not have enough of an opportunity to, uh, to take a course like Dr. Harris or Dr. Hopper or others would have offered. And um, this center will provide that opportunity in large measure for those who are uh, considering public service, uh, considering public office. Um, and Claire, I think, or Clara has demonstrated that she's uh, well on her way, I think, based upon her remarks today and her commitment, those uh, probing questions about why people vote and the, the, the reason they provided to you, I'd be interested in the responses, <laughs> at least some of the responses, maybe not all. Um, but I, I'm especially grateful to be here for, for other reasons as well. In some ways, I, I appear, uh, appear today uh, not only as a public official, and as a resident of this city, but, but um, um, with a heart full of gratitude for the fact that this center is, um, is getting off the ground today, a center for both ethics and excellence in public service. This would not be possible. Uh, the idea wouldn't, wouldn't have presented itself the way that it has to lead to this day if uh, our former Lieutenant Governor, Bill Scranton, hadn't proposed it. He proposed it to me and to my office, and then our office began to work on it with the university. Uh, but I want to thank Bill for his leadership. Um, and it's so appropriate, uh, not only at this time, but for this region. Uh, too often we've had examples uh, where public officials got in trouble over and over and over again throughout my lifetime, and I know 
long before I was around. But it's also especially significant and appropriate in light of where we are with our, our democracy writ large, the, the democracy uh, that we cherish, but a democracy that just endured ever so uh, precariously endured a kind of the ultimate stress test. That's what the financial experts were talking about in 2008. We had an economic uh, calamity. They talked about banks and other financial institutions having to endure stress, a stress test to see if they could survive. Well, we didn't realize that that became, um, that became a uh, uh, kind of a foundation for the uh, stress tests that our democracy has endured. And it only endured because a, a rather small group of officials, some appointed, some elected, uh, county election boards throughout the country, state officials who were elected and appointed, and of course members of the judiciary, uh, state and federal judiciary, all kinds of different courts uh, were presented with uh, the choice to do the wrong thing uh, or the right thing. And fortunately, enough of them uh, chose to do the right thing. And so this, this center will take on added significance well beyond uh, this region and the challenges faced by people who live in the 13 counties uh, of northeastern Pennsylvania that will uh, be served by this center. I was struck by both the, the vision and the mission of this center as articulated, that communities in northeastern Pennsylvania in which local and state public officials and community members are dedicated to governance that is just and effective for all. That's the, the vision. But the, the mission, as you see over my left shoulder, that the center advocates for and promotes the common good of all through programs that support the development of ethical and competent public servants, public officials, and of a uh, of, of civically knowledgeable, responsible, and engaged community members. So I think it very clearly in the mission articulates that this takes the, the commitment of both, both the public official, the public servant, uh, and again, I'm talking about those who are elected, but also appointed, um, as well as community members. I'll just spend a, f a few moments before I conclude talking about this, the, the first part of that, the public official part. I'll leave, leave to others, maybe for uh, another day or another course or class, to talk about the responsibility and commitment of community members. But I've spent some time as a public official, in my case, an elected public official, uh, it started for me in January of 1997. I was elected the Auditor General of the state. Um, coming from a, um, a Scranton law firm of a, a, of a few lawyers and a, and a small staff, and then be, by virtue of election by the people, being put in charge of a state agency that had at the time right around 800 employees. Um, so a different job uh, at a rather young age. But the, the first thing I said to my staff, the small kind of skeletal staff we had to lead this department, this sprawling department of, of uh, state government, uh, the first thing I said to them on the morning after the, you know, you have a swearing in ceremony and then you have a party, and then I went back to a red roof inn and thought, oh my God, tomorrow I have to lead this department. <laughs> Um, so I'm not sure I slept much that night. But the first thing I said to the, the, um, the group assembled in front of me, just about, I guess it was three or four staff members, was I took an, an, the oath of office yesterday um, because I'm the elected official. But um, you should assume you took the oath as well. You weren't elected, but you're part of this team. And um, the, I, I want you to assume going forward that you've taken that oath as well. And there began kind of a conversation, not just about how to set up an auditing agency or how to, uh, how to lead that agency, but also how to do so in a manner that was uh, consistent with the, the mission of, of this center, um, that, that we would be both ethical and competent. You need both. 
You can't have one without the other. Having one of the two is not good enough. You got to meet the demands of both. Uh, I had assembled a team that I know uh, could meet those two obligations, that they would be both competent and ethical. But I also wanted to make sure that the, the, the staff, uh, all 800 some, uh, would be uh, committed to that as well. And I've always said since that time when younger, much younger public officials or aspiring public officials asked me for uh, advice, uh, or even when they didn't ask for my advice, I would give it anyway. I'd say the one thing you should remember, other than knowing a lot about the office you're seeking and the office that you, you assume if you're elected, other than that, that, that knowledge and that commitment to doing a good job, um, the second thing you should do, and equally important, is whatever the code of conduct is for your department, make it stronger, make it tougher, and make it very clear from day one that everyone is bound by that. Now I did kind of a, I took this to a, maybe a more obnoxious level when I uh, had every member of our department sign the code of conduct, um, making sure that they were bound by their signature, that they would uh, abide by it. But then of course you have to enforce it. And um, we were pretty tough. And we ruffled a lot of feathers and got a lot of people mad at us. But it was very clear after even a couple of weeks, but certainly after a couple of months, that the people that worked with us had to be not only good at their job and competent, but in fact ethical. And if they weren't, they weren't going to be there very long. One of the, one of the, the um, interesting things about uh, state government is every once in a while you, um, you stumble upon uh, or you seek out, depending on, on which option you choose, um, areas of, of, um, of state government um, in an agency or through your exposure to individuals who are both ethical and competent, um, you're exposed to um, some inspiration uh, because of the work of an individual or an agency. Uh, one, of the, one of the really inspiring uh, features of, of my early work as a state official was to actually um, walk into the, before walking into the building, to look up and see what was inscribed in the building. And you can just imagine, this is a, uh, the building I worked in for 10 years, eight as Auditor General and two as State Treasurer, before being elected to the U.S. Senate. Uh, the building's called the Finance Building, and it was erected in, in the 1930s. And uh, I think, uh, really in, in a way that was uh, clairvoyant um, and brilliant at the same time. Those who were building the building didn't want to simply erect a, uh, a structure. They wanted that structure to reflect some of the values that they thought should be, um, should, uh, should animate the building. Um, not just the finance building, but government itself and state government in particular. So they decided to, to carve into the uh, into the, the perimeter of the building um, precepts that uh, all these years later, decades later, generations later, seem maybe self-evident but often uh, not observed and not adhered to. Uh, the other thing they did, which was nice, is they, they um, inscribed in the building the municipalities of the, of the Commonwealth. So Scranton has a, a prominent name on, that, on the outer perimeter of that building. But one of the, one of the uh, inscriptions was uh, something that forecasted the kind of transparency in government that we all hope to achieve today. It said, uh, um, uh, secure, uh, no, it said, it talked about ins being open to inspection. And, and the ins inscription was this, open to every inspection, secure from every suspicion. Think about that for a moment. Just in a simple precept, the idea of transparency, that you're, if you're open, uh, and especially if you're a public official or public agency, you're probably going to be more secure from suspicion if you're open. But the one inscription that made the most sense to me and was really, and still is for me, um, kind of a foundation for inspiration for the work that I try to do every day 
and I hope uh, others would as well, is this inscription. It's right on the front of the finance building. Uh, it's a description of public service, but I think in some ways it's, it's broader than that. Uh, and this is the inscription. All public service is a trust given in faith and accepted in honor. Uh, there's a lot in that. It's a simple, uh, a simple precept, but a lot in it. That first of, the first part of it, that all public service is a trust. That's a trust between the elected official and those that uh, he or she works with and the people they serve. That it is a, a relationship of trust. And it's not just conferred on you because you took an oath and you're, you know, you're off to the races, so to speak. It's, it's a trust that has to be earned each and every day. You're a public official in each and every hour of every day. Uh, so that part is obviously important. If they stopped right there, it would be uh, important and, and, and instructive. Um, but then it describes what the trust is about. It's given in faith, and that's the election part of it, uh, at least for the, the one who is elected. That that trust is given to you uh, by the voters, and by giving you that uh, that opportunity really to serve, um, they're, they're, they're uh, giving it to you with a, with a faith that you will, you will do a good job. You will be, as the mission statement says, both ethical and competent. Um, the last part, of course, is also important. All public service is a trust given in faith, and the last part is accepted in honor. And that's the, the public officials uh, obligation, and again, those who work with him or her, that the only way you can accept uh, that um, that obligation, that trust, is to return the work that you do uh, in honor. And again, not good enough to be just competent. Uh, you have to be uh, you have to be ethical as well. And so that that precept has guided the uh, the work that I've done. I hope that I've lived up to it each and every day. Uh, probably at times I haven't. I hope I uh, can say that I have. But I think it's important that in a center like this that we ground uh, or, or provide a foundation um, for young people, ground them or, 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 or uh, uh, inspire in them uh, to be committed at the outset. From the moment you seek public office, not upon election, but the moment you seek public office that you'll be grounded in a precept like that. And I have every confidence that this center will be a center that will uh, not only foster and perpetuate, uh, but will prepare uh, young people for public service, either as the elected official or the person who, uh, uh, by appointment, is serving uh, the people of the city of Scranton or Lackawanna County uh, or the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or our nation. And I was blessed uh, early on uh, to not only have the inspiration of that precept and people around me who gave, gave me good advice, but in my case it came right from my home. Both, uh, both of my parents stressed these ideas in the context of what your obligation as a citizen or as a member of society or a member of a family. Uh, so there was a natural extension for me when I was able to come upon that, that inspirational uh, precept about public service. Uh, but it's never been more important, even in the absence of this uh, painful and, and still yet unresolved stress test for our democracy. Uh, but uh, this, the, uh, the value of uh, the primacy of, really the necessity of this center has um, never been more important. And again, not only for this region, uh, but for the nation as a whole. I hope that more regions of the country, more great universities like the University of Scranton, will uh, institute uh, some version uh, of, this, uh, of this center for both ethics and excellence in public service. Thanks for making it possible. I'm honored to be with you today.
Thank you, Senator Casey. As a Catholic and Jesuit university, the words trust and faith really are ones we value in our community here at the University of Scranton. And I want to thank you for the leadership and support you have given to this project. This concludes today's program. I want to thank you again for joining us and look forward to serving you through the work of the Center for Ethics and Excellence in Public Service. Thank you so much for joining us.